welcome back to Lost in Theaters, the podcast where Ruth and I discuss movies that have slipped through the cracks of pop culture. Hi! <laughs> That's Ruth. <laughs> and I'm Rachel. So, uh, before we dive into our next film, which I'm thrilled, thrilled to discuss this week, uh, some closing comments on Kant und Floss from last week, which oh, I yes. still say I would say like a German, I hear it and it kind of drives me nuts um, his name was Mario Moreno, guys <laughs> just because That's pretty different. I kept misremembering it and it was a problem Mario Moreno is the real name of Kant und Floss and for clarification, in Spanish speaking communities uh, Mario Moreno, Kant und Floss is still like you know, rel- as, as much of a household name as Charlie Chaplin is in... Oh, cool. In, yeah. Um, <laughs> but then this movie is definitely it, it lost in theaters insofar as people... It didn't get very... People didn't really watch it. It didn't really spread around. Nobody really didn't get, didn't really get anywhere. Like the Mr. Rogers movie that came out recently. Yeah, but the thing about Mr. Rogers movie is I heard about it still. Yeah, well, it just came out. Yeah, but I didn't hear about this one. That one came out in like 2016, I think, and I didn't hear anything about and how it. How old were you? 16, Ruth. Uh-huh. I heard about Mr. Rogers Trapped in school at the same time. With no social media. Look, our secretary told me about Mr. Rogers the movie <laughs> that came out. No, I mean like the cultural equivalent. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, yeah, yeah, I get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what the? <laughs> Are you then? <laughs> yes. Yeah, and. Heads up, keep your eye out for this, folks. Ruth and I will probably do a special bonus podcast soon discussing what it means to be lost in theaters slash uh, what pop culture is. There is mild fear in my stomach. <laughs> and in mine, Ruth. It's a convoluted topic. <sighs> it's coming, folks. Stay tuned. Okay. Yay. This week. Are you ready, Ruth? Um, not I usually. This was not even on my radar until the day that I watched it. Okay. I'm afraid to disappoint you with my lack of reaction. Oh no, I expect lack of reaction. Okay. Yeah, are as you long ready? As we're on the same page. Particularly with this one. Right? Okay. Oh, here we go. The <laughs> the movie's name is Sinful Davy. Like pushing up daisies? No, Ruth. <laughs> Sinful Davy. I realize now the contention was around the Davy bit. Yeah. Right, right, okay. This came out in 1969. Woo! Yeah. Isn't that the year? Oh! That someone it was, the winter, was born. The winter of 69, folks! I'm gonna write a song. Just like the summer of 69, but it's gonna be the winter of 69. We're not gonna say who was born. Who was the winner of 69? It's gonna be a great song. Whoa. <laughs> I'm so excited. Uh-huh. Okay, unrelatedly, <laughs> Sinful Davy. Um, it sounds like a hamster. I'm gonna be honest. Wow. It sounds like something you would name okay, okay. your demonic hamster what? trapped in a classroom. What if I said it like this? Sinful Davy! <laughs> And now all I can think of is Dr. Lyle Jeffrey. Yeah, actually, whenever <sighs> he talks about his dad and Ooh. talking about him. Yeah. Davy. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that's the right vibe. Yeah, that's the right vibe, Ruth, because um, this movie, so low, low spoiler section, though, before we, <laughs> right vibe, low spoiler section, I didn't like this movie. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> No, but I did. didn't regret watching it, Ruth. Ew. <laughs> because the premise, <laughs> the premise and the arc of the movie, like, like what it was trying to do was actually, I enjoyed the idea a lot in retrospect. However, the movie itself, I did not enjoy. Um, <laughs> so, you know, those live action, uh, yeah, the Narnia movies from BBC, Oh, the ones before the ones that the were ones made? before the ones that the ones were made. you got in VHS from the library. Yeah, uh huh. Where Reaper Cheap or Reaper Cheap is a man in a mouse in a suit. mouse suit and you're just aghast. And that's like the only glaring thing that's wrong. It's, yeah, you're. It's weird, right? Because everything else is fine. You and you're kind just desperately of... trying to ignore the man <laughs> in the mouse costume. You're willing, especially if you see that one first. You're willing to enjoy those movies. That one meaning the Void of the Dawn Treader. 
Right, but it, actually, there was also the silver chair. Doesn't mean, yeah, that was it. And I never saw this one, but apparently there was a Lion, the Witch, in the Wardrobe, too. Well, didn't they do all of them? I don't know. I, has anyone done the last battle? Because I'm shocked they did all of them. If they did the last battle, I want to see whatever they did at the Those end. Those are some lost, but no, they're not. <laughs> People know about <laughs> People those. People know about those. There's enough Narnia fans out there. That's a good point. Sort of spread. But no, so, but you know, like, when the acting in those movies gets kind of, like, harsh. Do you know yeah. what I mean? That's what the acting is like in this movie. Most Ew, of the time. Weird. Is the harsh acting. And additionally, uh, two more things. Okay, so think, um, so Star Wars came out in 1977. So remember Noted. that <laughs> when you watch Star Wars, because... So the, the story of Star Wars alone is just great, right? And so it keeps you enthralled. But when people who have never had, have no love for Star Wars watch episode four, they are just baffled that anyone has ever loved this movie because it is so, such a 70s movie. Like, just, like, graphically and, like, ah. and just the way that it's filmed mm-hmm. and how it looks and the, the pacing... Mm-hmm. And people get upset, <laughs> and they're like, "How? How is this? How do people like this movie?" Because I just and they just don't have any love for it, and are willing to like give it grace and appreciate the glory. I have a dark secret. You don't like it, Ruth, <laughs> do you? <laughs> I, that that took no time for me to understand, sister. I'm not sure I don't like it. It's not really. You don't have a soft spot it. for it. I have, yeah, weirdly. Oh my goodness, that's okay, Ruth. We'll. Talk I do about like the stories, right? But like the actual movies, I just, you know, that's the case with a lot of things <gasps> in life. I think I love talking about it. I love the world building, right? And similarly with this movie, with Sinful Davy, where, um, and additionally because people don't have any thing going into s- this movie, there isn't there's this willingness to be to look past the agedness of the film right like it's very okay. 1969 okay. <laughs> in its filming additionally and this was really frustrating there were far too many moments where i thought was that a woman's bare breast that i just saw <laughs> ruth it was just really weird like it would be just you know you're just watching a movie and then you're like what and it would just be I'm desperately trying to come up with a reaction for you I, I just, know I and it would just be <sighs> and it wasn't long enough that you were just so certain but you just would be so yeah are they just walking around topless no no this uh, sinful Davy is a, is a ladies man okay right and okay. so there are obviously gonna be some scenes where you know, he's loving the ladies, let's say. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, and you know, like, nowadays, if it's a PG-13 movie, mm. and they, they have ways of filming these things, yeah. and then just this one, I just wasn't, they just didn't have, <laughs> have that, like, skill developed or something. Maybe they just didn't see it as an issue. Right, again, 1969, maybe... M- our mother keeps talking about how, like, our often, mother. <laughs> often these when you go back and watch these PG thirteen movies from the sixties and seventies, you're just shocked at what they allowed huh. to slide in these things. Um, what they thought was okay. Um, so that was also a consistent downer. <laughs> Not a consistent downer. It was. Just a few times, but very off-putting every time. Are we just more sensitive now? I guess. I don't know. I just think... I mean, I'm not. I think it also... That's also a problem. <laughs> ...was just... It just didn't... Yeah. It didn't fit the tone or the or who it was set for. Like, oh, if you're like a... Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. it just well, it didn't make sense okay. in any way. <laughs> yeah. Right? Okay. Oh, no, I haven't seen the movie. Right. You haven't seen the movie. That's why I can't make a judgment there. Okay. <laughs> So, I just didn't really like the movie, like, the watching experience. Um, <laughs> but I'm stay sorry. tuned, folks, because there's so much more <laughs> that's in store. It's a, we have some great things to talk about ahead. 
So now that you've just lost most of our audience. I know! <laughs> they're like, why do I need to watch this movie? Are you ready, guys? Medium spoiler section. Because it needs a remake. It what? must be. What? This movie needs a remake so bad. In the same way that The Rocketeer does not need a remake. <laughs> Right? Because if for some reason... Did you say that? I, I did, I, I mean, think, I during you. The Rocketeer. Just, man, I don't remember. Yeah, then the same way that The Rocketeer does not need a remake, this movie desperately needs a remake. Oh. Because David Haggart, with a T, folks, Haggart, was a real dude. What? Yeah, he lived from what? 1801 to 1821. Okay, 20 years of his life. Okay. When he was caught, finally, he was a Scottish highwaymen okay when he was caught he proceeded like just before getting hanged to write an autobiography oh of his own life like which is uh, like uh, an autobiography, auto- autobiography. Yeah, yeah okay <laughs> of his, he wrote the story of his own life which if you google david haggart again make sure you do it with a t because i accidentally with a d once and then it was just like <laughs> random people so <laughs> he with two g's and a t the second google results to come up consistently for me was the actual manuscript not Whoa. not handwritten manuscript yeah. but like print manuscript of this man's autobiography that you can just look at okay <laughs> i mean of his life ruth he okay. just just this man <laughs> who said I'm going to write my autobiography of my life as a highwayman in Scotland as just before I die. I mean, he knew who he was. Yeah, and then he's like, <laughs> and then I'm going to dedicate it to the person who supported me, who oh. who didn't mean to support me, who was like this baron who he robbed. It's like a whole thing. Is this just Robin Hood or what? No, he was de- he was so another thing important interestingly about this fellow is he's not so it's funny how in our minds we think of like robin hood or batman who technically doesn't kill who want part of his code is like not killing people where as mm. real criminals are are a little more prone to murder i think uh, <laughs> willingness to murder now what would you know about that I, nothing ruth okay i compare him more to barbosa in pirates of the caribbean insofar as this yeah, Robin Hood. Just no, because Robin Hood. <laughs> I'm, Robin I'm the kidding. Rich to I'm the kidding. Poor. Barbosa is totally just swashbuckling. I'll shoot you in the head for crossing me. Ta da! And then you shoot him right back. Yeah, and then you don't die. Why? Because you both took the treasure, and you're both just skeletons now, and you're bored. <laughs> okay, so. Um, that's, uh, that's a Pirates of the Caribbean reference. That's right, folks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so the story, the movie, follows the life of Davy um, Crockett Haggart as he, when he first enters his criminal enterprise, the middling part, and then when he ends his career. Middling. Yeah. So it's sort of a following of that, and like I said already. How much similarity does it bear to oh dang I just blanked on it Consolation of Philosophy mm, by Boethius. None. Cool. <laughs> Except that it's prison literature. You're right. <laughs> In the great genre that is prison literature. <laughs> um, yeah, no, there's no visiting of the muse or or philosophy. It's just a regular little autobiography. It's an autobiography. Although... You know, like a cross between that and the confessions, you know? Yeah. Except totally secularified because Davy Haggart was Davy Haggart. <laughs> yeah. Because Davy um, Haggart It was stars, Davey the, the main actor is John Hurt. Now, some people are really excited to hear this news. I don't know who these people are. <laughs> because every time John Hurt is in anything... He gets these... He's always given special attention. He's the voice of the dragon in uh, Merlin. Every single opening sequence of Merlin credits the voice of the dragon to John Hurt, whether or not the dragon is in that episode of Merlin. Oh. (laughs) Every time, Ruth. (laughs) I don't know why I noticed this, but I did. 
And additionally, he plays the wartime doctor in the Doctor Who series. Is, oh. um, and he's like, they were like, we got John Hurt for Doctor Who. Like the old one? Like no, the, old the new one. <laughs> he's He was an old guy when he played the new wartime doctor. Which number? Uh, like in the he he, he was he was in it for a special for a special. Oh, yeah. I think he passed away recently though. John Hurt. I feel like we should have looked that one up. I know. <laughs> this seems crucial. <laughs> um, yeah. No, but he's John Hurt is in this one. He's got floppy hair, and um, he's a lovely lovely fellow. Yes, John Hurt. Uh-huh. Yes, he died in twenty seventeen. Yeah, that was. Too many years ago? I wish I could tell you, sister. Wait, three years. Three? It's 2017. Oh my gosh, 2020. 2020. <laughs> yeah, that's alarming. Okay, so, um, uh, yeah, that's the middle spoiler section, Ruth. How do you feel? I feel highly uninformed. Oh, well. But, you know, that's just kind of my questions, state in life. Questions, comments, concerns... Before we go about telling everyone what happened and why it's such a great movie, that needs why the movie needs to be remade. Like seriously, the premise is is a really good premise, right? You've got this Scottish highwayman, who yeah, who you follow. You know he his his goal is he's trying to actually his dad was also a highwayman, so he's following in his father's footsteps. Okay, and he's trying to be. As good, if not better, than his father at being a highwayman. Okay. And, which is a robber, for those who don't know what a highwayman is. I keep saying highwayman, and then I was like, wait, that's not normal. But, like, a robber on the road. Yeah, a robber on the road. Like a The old carriages. road. Um, <laughs> and so he, um, he's trying to be just like his dad and do this, and he, uh, his father got caught robbing a duke, and then he got hanged. And when he, who was like twenty or something, and so uh, Davy wants to rob the same duke, but not get when caught. Davy was twenty, or no, his father, his was, father 20. was like twenty or something. His father was twenty. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> That's the comment, and I'm just sort of, you know, people have kids young. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who's Davy's mom? Uh, there's just some woman we never meet who's mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's real specific. Okay. I know. And, yeah. Okay. Um, and then, meanwhile, you know, in the story, there's, like, a girl who's trying to convert him the whole time. It's pretty great <laughs> in that, that way. sounds terrible. That's oh, no, terrible. it's it's kind of funny, because... Ha, 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 ha. You'll see as we go. Okay. Um, Anything about the music we should know? The opening song... Is someone wrote a song about sinful Davy, which could be, in fact, a traditional song, but also it looked based off of the credits that had been written for this piece of movie, literature, moviness, <laughs> film, p- film for this film. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. All right. Now, yeah. other than that, the music was borderline Scottish. <laughs> I'm squinting at you. <laughs> right. Uh, as far as the plot goes, I'll just... We'll go into the major spoiler section now. Um, it's it's not... Quick run through. Uh, yeah, it's not super duper... Duper convoluted. <laughs> he was duper. in the military. He duper. throws his drum that he's beating um, because he's in the military over the bridge, lands in the water... He does a whole thing. He escapes from the military, and you know, you know who, he, you know this guy's character because he, he, they put up his sign. And he's like, "This guy's wanted for deserting," and then he's upset that they only want five guineas for him, and he's like, "Ah," and then he gets like a team of friends. He, he well, one guy, he, one guy tries to pickpocket him. Oh my goodness, the excessive wor- use of the word "poke" in this song, this in this movie, into, like increasingly more detailed detail. I All know. Of a sudden, you just like do. <laughs> Wow. The word poke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, I just remembered. It's they use it for the word purse all the time. Uh-huh. Like your money purse. Okay. They're like, you tried to pinch my poke consistently. Wow. All 
the time, <sighs> Ruth. It was just so intense. Okay. Oh my gosh. I feel like that should be in like the vocabulary lesson at the beginning with oh, the Greek. With how Martina. You should know what the word poke, poke means. Poke, if you're in Scotland, it's more Irish anyways. It means purse. Um, and I had to remember that because they started talking about poking and there was a knife involved and I was like, are you threatening to kill me? I can't remember. And then I was like, oh yeah, it's purse. Um, how did your accent develop over the course of this movie? Poorly. Poorly, sister. Mm. Um, mm -mm. So he he teams up with the guy who tried to rob him, whose name is McNabb. And now they're a team robbing, and their first gig goes real bad. <laughs> and they end up in jail. Um, but actually, first they go visit his dad's grave. And you meet the other, the girl, who just drives her cows through the Scottish countryside. Shepherdess. Yeah, just a cow, a female, a little cow herd girl. And she quotes scripture at him and is like, Stop your evil ways, Davy. Come back to the Lord. And, <laughs> um, Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, no! And he literally runs away. <laughs> <laughs> you see, it's very, very strange in this way. And so then they go and try this Sounds thing. Like gets caught. <laughs> thrown in prison. Um, let's see. Um, it doesn't go well. Oh, actually, that's not how they get caught. He gets caught. Now, this is weird. He gets, he goes into a doctor's house, okay, and he's hiding there, and then the doctor comes out, and he has to go down to the basement to hide, finds all of the nasty doctor things that are in this basement, in oh, yeah. jars, hygiene. because we're in the 1800s, he opens, he co uncovers a sheet and finds a cadaver, which I... And now that I think about it, this scene is kind of alarming. <laughs> Which, it's like, you know, a skinless body down there. Oh. He screams, goes back, knocks over some jars. He's really alarmed. It's really weird. Then he goes up the stairs, opens the door, and the doctor has, like, a gun pointed at him. And he's like, oh my gosh. And he says, the doctor says, turn around and stick your arm out in front of you. And start leaning forward so that it looks like it, you're running when I shoot you. And then he's like, and that way I can use your body as a cadaver. Because you know how hard it is to get cadavers out here? And you're like... This is not an okay, doctor. Oh, I know! And then Davy's like, actually, I have a better deal for you. What if I brought you a fresh new body instead of you killing me? I'll just go over and get that guy they just hung. That works. Hanged. It did. And he went and got this body out of the graveyard, him and uh, McNabb do. I and, guess that is less complicated. And that, so here's the thing, though. As they're carrying this body out of the graveyard, these soldiers stop them, and they have this little chit-chat, and... Just holding the body. Well, they're... It's in a casket. This massive casket. Just holding a massive casket. Well, they're like, <laughs> what's the casket in okay. the casket? And he's like, well, I don't have a cart. <laughs> oh. Um, and he's like, so here, I keep my cabbages in there. And so it turns out they do have serious? a ton of cabbages in there, and they have a thing of whiskey or whatever in there too so they open it up feed the give the the people some whiskey put it back in lift the casket the bottom falls out and the body <laughs> falls out with all the cabbages and they run off and then then they get caught yeah it's really that's a little involved it's really involved like i said Why there's that scene in there a lot of material to work with but like you just it like, wasn't organized well? It just wasn't organized well, okay. yeah. Because then, um, there's a whole... They end up in prison, and, um, prison. the ladies' the ladies prison is on top of their prison, and they wind up smashing the head of what? a Cabbage. person. Cabbage? Through Cabbage. the... They, they, what they do is they, they literally hold this person by the legs and smash him into the ceiling to bust through the roof of the men's prison into the women's prison and then they all they pull each other up and then they have like a whole party secretly but not secretly in so is the, the prison head okay or is he dead he's fine it's okay, so the way you weird said that, it sounded like he was just gone i know <laughs> no he made it out fine um, I, I don't, mm. meanwhile, Davy then, after this whole party happens, gets called to the judge. That's a nice word. 
I know. party. As opposed to debauchery. That's also not the word people would use. I, maybe it was the word that's appropriate. <laughs> Anyways, so Davy then gets called to the judge, and the judge says, Someone's paid your bail. You shouldn't be allowed to be in public, but someone paid your bail. <laughs> and it was Annie! And he's like, oh, when will you return to the Lord, Davy? Is this the one with the cows? That's right. And the thing is, Annie keeps following him. And he's like, why are you everywhere, Annie? And she's like, well, I just am. Um, or something. Sounds about right. Yep. And, <laughs> and um, so that's, you know, unsuccessful. And then, but see, here's the thing. Right after he sees Annie, this is, it just was so weird. Because then he just runs off. And winds up spending the night at some other lady's random, some random lady's house, Ruth. It was just so non sequitur. I bet it's explained in the book. Oh, you think so? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> um, oh, by the way, the th- whole thing is voiced over the whole time what? by, like, future Davy is talking the whole time. And he's like, and then I did this. And then it'll be like, as though he's recounting his life. That seems like the key thing in, like, how the, how the story's story unfolding. Yeah. Well, now everybody knows. Um, and so he's, you know, runs out the door that next morning. Slips. That, okay, that information is on par with, like, it's in black and white. Oh. Is it in black and white? It's an inset narrative. No, it's not. Okay. It's in color. Yeah, inset narrative. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Slips off the roof. Um, <laughs> then helps this gentleman defend himself from these people who are trying to beat him with rocks or something and then the gentleman thinks that Davy is a gentleman and so Davy then pretends to be a gentleman steals the man's purse this is robs painful. the man this of his painful. purse drops the purse in front of him at which point the guy picks it up having already invited Davy to drinks realizes he can't pay and Davy says well I'll take you to drinks then they go to drinks and then the other guy invites him to go see the Duke, the very same Duke who he wants to rob because his dad wants to rob, wanted to rob this guy and failed, and now Davy wants to rob this guy. So vengeance. Yeah. Exactly. It's no way to live. Oh my goodness. I just realized we, the, the thing is, it's so, like, episodic. Yeah. And so there's actually a whole thing that happened in here that involved uh, breaking people out of prison slash uh robbing a carriage and then almost getting murdered by peasants because they think he's a wealthy person and then boy are they wrong yeah and then him double crossing them when they find out he's not a wealthy person Mm -hmm. stealing money Mm -hmm. and then um then deserting them on the boat that they were robbing okay yeah so that all happened um, but we're just hitting the highlights, as you can tell. <laughs> highlights on the high road. Yes. Um, all this time, now though, the, the cops are using Annie as an informant. They're like, but Annie, tell Scotland. us where Davy is. It's before you do. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're trying to get Annie to tell them where Davy is, and she's just not telling them. Um, Yay, Annie. Yeah, Annie the sturdy hearted. Um, Aw, did they call her that? Nope. Aww. Yeah. So, they wind up doing this really amazing heist at... Heist! The, um... It's actually... It, I think it's a genius heist at the at this ball that the mm-hmm. Duke's having. Because Davy's in with the Duke now. They're like buds. Because <laughs> he's m- manipulated his way there. Are. And uh, he does this thing where he'll, like, dance around the room steal jewelry, wrap it in a handkerchief, put it on a hook that's in the chimney that his buddy has lowered down the chimney, and his buddy will reel that hook with the handkerchief and the stuff on it up out of the chimney, and then they'll have the gold. Or the jewels. They do this repeatedly? Yeah, several times throughout the whole evening. Whoa. And he robs most of the people there. It's a huge outrage, and when they question everyone, Davy is just standing right behind the Duke because no one suspects Davy because he's such a he's the guy that everybody yeah. loves. Uh-huh. It's a whole thing. So his friends spend the night on the roof with the treasure, but they broke a pearl necklace on accident and Annie figured out where they were. So when they wake up and meet Davy in the morning outside in the country, they open up the bag and find that it's full of like ashes and wood Annie? and they think what happened and they also find that's right. A Bible? 
<laughs> and of course, Davy's like, Annie! <laughs> oh, that girl is everywhere! And then he has to go find Annie, and he says, how did you do it? And she says, it wasn't that hard, really. And in that moment, with them talking to it, the cops figure out who he is, and they say, oh my goodness, let's chase him. And they go on this mad chase through the countryside. He steals the horse of a, of a huntsman. There's, like, a hunt going on. Did you know that there's, like, 20 beagles sometimes on these hunts when they chase foxes? That's a lot. I just, they had this picture of all these little beagles <laughs> running <laughs> across the open plains, and I just thought, so many beagles. <laughs> I just was shocked, and they were all so small. Yeah. It was very weird. I guess that's how it works. I realized they were kind of small, and I always thought there were, like, two. I did too, but there were a lot of little beagles. Okay. Yeah. That would and explain several why horses. that works. Uh, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, so they, um, he gets, but then there's this really awkward moment where he tries to go up a bank and the horse won't go up the bank because it's too steep and the horse just runs into the bank <laughs> and flips Davy off into a swamp. And then they run through the swamp and the other guys get stuck in the swamp and Davy thinks he's won and then he runs through the forest, turns around, looks behind him, and are you ready for it, Ruth? Mm-mm. Four gets hit in the head with a golf ball. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> so I looked it up. Golf has been around, arguably, since Julius Caesar. You're kidding! <laughs> golf is a really old thing. There's they People debate how old it is. The first... Uh, British Open was in 1860, but it was a casual sport, w- like, in the 50, in the 15th century. Okay. Okay. To the point that it was so popular in Scotland, golf was, <laughs> that people were neglecting their military duties, and thus, golf was outlawed. <laughs> <laughs> and I just can't imagine to say, we're outlawing golf, y'all. And the thing is, then they, it just didn't work. Can you say that with a Scottish accent? We're outlawing golf, y'all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why they don't do that. Yeah. Uh, by King James II of Scotland, for those who are wondering. This was in 1457. You can fact check, look it up, feel free. I could be totally wrong. I feel like there's something important about James. The second? I, it's, it's... He's too early, though, for him to be... <laughs> <laughs> be what? Be James of England as well, I think. I don't think these they I don't think the trees have joined yet. No, I mean I just thought they had interesting rulers. Was this one particularly I I think he was called the horrible. There. <laughs> the rules were largely ignored, however, and it's got and uh, golf continued to be a big craze, and that's why it's reasonable that Davy got hit in the back of the head with a golf ball, because golf was still a thing. <laughs> <laughs> um so then he goes and he gets put in front of the court. And Ruth, this court is a Toad of Toad Hall courtroom. Legitimately. Like Wind in the Willows movie? Yes. Like the Wind in the Willows movie where the, 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 where the judge sits is way up high. Yeah. And then there's, behind them are these just. With all the wood paneling? Wood paneling. And behind them are these crowds of people like going up and up and up. Whoa. That is, the set is that. And I just suddenly realized why the Toad of Toad Hall set looked like that. <laughs> it was such a scary scene in yeah, The Wind in the Willows. Just very not. I like that. Yeah. No, but this is a little less scary, but still very intimidating. Mm-hmm. And I immediately had a reference for it as, you know, Toad. Go watch Wind in the Willows. Um, yeah. I'll read the books. I'll read the books. They're great. They inspired A.A. A. Milne to write Winnie the Pooh. That makes total sense. Yeah, exactly. Um, so... Annie says, why can't he just go to Australia? Yeah, Annie, why can't he just go to Australia? Because she wants him not to die, and they're like, well, because we, there's some great line about not wanting to blight them with our blight or something like that. Uh, Have they been to Australia? And then the Duke, who was robbed, who was so charmed by him, tries to speak up for him, and they're like, but we need consistency. You're supposed to be the law of the land. And he's like, well, I suppose I won't that then he's like i'm sorry davy it's a problem and then they're like i guess you're gonna be hanged who has he killed by the way nobody in the movie (laughs) (laughs) what i mean in real life i think he killed people i'm pretty sure he did what kind of censoring is this (laughs) (laughs) 
I'm just saying. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so he's sentenced to be hanged. Annie visits him in prison. Davy's really upset because he thinks he's failed. He's like, I didn't do what my dad did. My dad would be so upset. It's a whole thing. And then the Duke proceeds. They're all, and while Annie and Davy are talking, they open the door and they're like, courtesy of the Duke. And they like remove all the sad furniture and bring in all this royal, like a desk what? made of oak and a high backed cushion chair. What? And beautiful furniture and books. And, and then Davy has this idea. Oh no. Um, because actually a psychologist also comes in. What? Like one of the old timey phrenologists. Who so studies like your the skull. brain exactly and studies your skull like those and they're guys. trying to they're they're wondering what makes him so special what makes this guy so special so they're measuring this man's skull davy's skull and i i special because he was such a wild highwayman and and yet everyone loved him apparently it was very amicable um so they're like what and so then he has this idea, and he says, I'll write my own memoirs. And it is pointed out oh. by someone in the room. And then that's who we find out who's been voicing over the whole thing, yeah. is these memoirs. And we find out someone in the room says, uh, Davy, you just claimed to have done that thing that was done when you were not even born yet. And Davy's like, nobody cares. I, I did it. It's all fine. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't know if the story was true. Oh, no! No, of course. Oh, yeah. that's why they cut out things. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. Oh, that's cool. It's a really cool idea. So then, um, Annie goes to see the Duke, and she says, Oh, Duke, would you just please give him a good coffin? Because, you know, he was such a good guy, and you couldn't stand up for him. Give him a real coffin. And so they one of those pine wood coffins. And he says, oh, no. I will do that for him. And then she says, would you give him a good Christian burial as well? You know, with a priest and things. Maybe yeah. maybe his soul will be saved after he's dead. Uh -huh. And he says, okay, okay. So they do. She and the tears work. Uh -huh. And uh, the then tears work. <laughs> we see Annie sneak into the Undertaker's uh, apartments and um, knock out the Undertaker with a brick. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, hang on. From the rafters, <laughs> okay? And Davy is now going to the noose. And he finishes, he dedicates this whole thing to the Duke, his memoirs to the Duke. He's going to the noose and he's like, where's Annie? Shouldn't Annie be here? Oh, <laughs> that's and, uh, so sad. If you see Annie, tell her that, you know, I, uh, tell her I converted. <laughs> she would probably appreciate that. So they go up and as he's standing there, the hangman goes to put the noose on him, and he looks at the Found hangman, Annie. and who is the hangman? <laughs> McNabb, his old friend from earlier. Oh. And so they put the noose on him. The, cr the crowd is getting really excited because it's a crowd, because it's mm -hmm. public execution. He gets hung, except there's a huge pile of cushions underneath where him, McNabb, and... Oh, it's someone else. Oh, I can't remember who the other person is. Um, but they drag him out and they're like, be quiet. They dump him in what is his casket. They're like, stay in the casket. They close the casket. <laughs> and then the casket is taken onto the funeral cart by the guards. McNabb and the other guy drive the funeral cart out of town. And then the girls, because there was actually another girl as well, who tagged up with McNabb okay. later. They hitch a ride on the back. It was, actually, I was really pleased to see this. They are the ones who hitched a ride on the back of the cart. They ran to catch up and <laughs> sat on it. And then they took it all the way out of town to the burial. At the burial, good Christian burial with the priest who's reading the Bible, they uh -huh. open it up and out comes, out comes Davy, glad to be alive. And there's, of course, because it's Scotland, there's bagpipes. Uh -huh. And the bagpipes switch from being like a funeral dirge <laughs> to, a, to a jig. <laughs> and they all start dancing. It's really exciting. And then the last scene is, uh, you know, Davy and Annie tending her cows together in the fields. You know, he's given up. He goes off and he's like, now we're going to, you know, just like you always said, Annie, we'll spend time together. And Is this last part still voiced over by him no okay so oh. this last part is the creative license that they take and so they say that of course davy escaped he's had a trick for everything he escaped from prison like four times he's got uh -huh. a way out so they hanged but he didn't actually die and he escaped and he lived the rest of his days happily Problem is that 
is too clever. Oh. <laughs> I think I think it would be a great movie. I still think yeah. I think it'd be a great remake. The whole thing it could be a really good movie. I skipped over the whole Annie and Davy have way more not way more. They have at least two romantic scenes that are just so hard to watch. <laughs> uh, don't know why they're just the dialogue is really hard <laughs> it just like Anakin and Padme level oh <laughs> it was really very yeah yeah I just go back to Star Wars. why are you why are you trying to convert me Annie and she says no I'm not trying to convert you I'm trying to save your soul it's very complicated but yeah Huh. It's all based on these memoirs that actually existed, and yeah. I just think it's such a cool story, and I like the twist at the end where he actually survived, and, you know, it's really fun. I think yeah. it's fun. It's a fun story. And I think that today it could be it could be redone really well, you know? Yeah. 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 And it's the sort of anti-hero we're craving in this century. That's true. Everybody wants a bad guy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> these days yeah depends on who you talk to that's true we, we actually want good guys it's what we are we recognize our flaws in the bad guys we just recognize that those exactly. heroes maybe weren't good exactly well folks that's all for this week's episode actually something that we're i should encourage our listeners to do uh-huh. is to um like the podcast on whatever platform that you're listening to it on and leave a review if possible um apple podcast has reviews so if you're listening on apple Podcasts, it would be really awesome if you can leave a, a good review for us um additionally that's how the algorithms work <laughs> and know that we exist additionally <laughs> yeah we want the algorithms to know we exist so it suggests us to think to people <laughs> and then people are like oh look at that thing we'll work on our quality yeah, we're doing all right. Also, the day that this podcast comes out, which is not today because we don't record the day of, but we will be launching our YouTube channel, Ruth. What? I know. I was not aware but of this. But see, here's the thing about the YouTube channel. It isn't going to have our whole podcast on it. It's only going to have the zero spoiler and low spoiler section of the podcast. So, if you think... I'm going to be deeply disappointed. (laughs) (laughs) No! If you think that your friend might like a movie, you can send them the link to YouTube, right? Because then they can listen to that part on YouTube and judge whether they might want to either watch the movie or listen to the podcast. And there are more people who are willing to watch and listen to YouTube. Can we put, like, more helpful information in, like, the description? Like stuff that maybe is mentioned that should be in the in the description of the youtube video yeah we could so theoretically like, like no spoiler stuff that's mentioned in the later sections yeah that yeah like... yeah yeah cool cool we can do that that could work but yes that's the newest thing we also have a twitter which thousands of people are following roof did you know falsehoods falsehoods <laughs> we're really bad at twitter I don't know what to do. <laughs> it's just sitting there. It's only been like a week. I know. I don't really understand how it works, so we're just going to let it sit there. If you're sit if you're by. a Twitter person, feel free to do whatever that does. Twit. Tw- to tweet. <laughs> twit? Tweet, to tweet, twit? Ruth. Twit. It's time. It's time to finish with the song. Oh. Are you ready? I forgot about this. Oh, Davey was a highwayman. And we talked about him today. Oh, Davey was a crazy man. And this is what we'll say. Listen to our podcast in the future and you'll see there are other people who are a little bit more like me. (laughs) (laughs) That's all, folks. (laughs) Thanks so much for listening. Bye. Bye.